South African actors nominated for an Academy Award this year, but that could become the exception rather than the rule. Well, it's not just Charlize Theron and Beth Davids and Arnold Forslew making a name for themselves in Hollywood. We met up with some up-and-coming local actors trading it all in for Tinseltown. He's got a part in the Golden Globe winning sitcom Ugly Betty. He's landed a role opposite Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean 3. And he's just made his big break in a film that stars Ben Affleck and Jeremy Piven. So what do these actors have in common? Well, even though they all reside in LA, they still call South Africa home. I came for a little, during uh, Hotel Rwanda, when it was nominated for Oscars, the producers had come over to South Africa and said, oh, you know, we loved you in the, the movie. And I said, oh, do you think I should go off and, uh, you know, give Hollywood a try? And I said, yeah, you should come off and have a look. So I went over in April, just after the Oscars. Cape Tonian Stelio Cervante came to the state several years ago on a tennis scholarship. When he arrived in New York, he swapped tennis for acting. Fifteen years later, he's now hot Hollywood property. My manager calls me up, she goes, congratulations, I have like really good news and really bad news, but Ugly Betty's been picked up. I'm like, oh, that's great. What, what's the bad news? She goes, yeah, it uh, shoots in California. They need an answer tomorrow because they're going to have to recast the role as soon as possible. And if you take it, you've got to be there Friday. So I'm like, um, yeah, just uh, let me talk to the wife and I'll call you right back. Hakim's big call came after he met Pirates director Gore Verbensky. He'd seen Hotel Rwanda, which was nice. And, uh, you know, we chatted. And then a couple of days later, I got a phone call saying he wanted me to do it. So I was like... <laughs> we knew he would get a good role like that because we, we knew what a good actor he was. But what was great is that he was working on a film that would expand his film resume and working with directors like Gore Verbinski and actors like Johnny Depp and Jeffrey Rush. So it was kind of the right role we wanted him to get for his first role in the States. Mike Falco came to L.A. seven years ago, but he didn't start out wanting to be an actor. I sort of fell into it when I was out here because I was competing uh, professional surfing and doing that out here and going up and down the coast of California and one of my surfing buddies who I was living on his couch at the time <laughs> he uh, he's an actor and he's been in a bunch of movies and he was in an acting class so he was you know talking about it and sort of piqued my interest well, several years later Mike's just finished working opposite Ben Affleck in the soon to be released Smoking Aces I was on set getting my head shaved because they shaved in a big receding hairline and uh, so I, I had to go onto the set to go and show the director my haircut. And uh, they were shooting a scene with Ben Affleck and uh, Peter Berg and uh, Martin Henderson. And so I walked on to uh, show Joe the, the haircut and uh, Ben stands up and like walks over to me and goes, hey man, my name's Ben, nice to meet you. Welcome to the set kind of thing. I was like, you're Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the, the biggest obstacle I'm facing now, every audition I'm going in and I'm going up against a name. It's like I, the other day I walk into an audition, Mark Ruffalo is signed in before me. So I'm like, great. And then as I'm coming out, Billy Baldwin walks in. Or, you know, a lot of sometimes it'll be Ben Bratt rolls and I'm like, lecker, cool, nice. You know, sometimes they'll go with the guy who's a working actor but not a household name. When he's not working on becoming a household name, Stelio spends time with his acting coach, practicing, amongst other things, how to disguise his South African accent. It's extremely difficult because if you have an accent, you're immediately limited in, in how they can cast you. Of course, you need more than just a good selection of believable accents to make it as an actor in L.A. So what advice, if any, would these three have for those wanting to make or break it in Hollywood? Whatever you do, do not take yourself seriously. There's so many actors coming from other countries. They're like, well, uh, I was on a soap opera in France. And they're like, well, that, that's great. Just play the part. Let's see what you can do here. The, the, you know, the guy who parts your car is, a, is an actor, and everybody's an actor or a director or a producer or something. But uh, having said that, that's also a great big plus as well. I've sort of realized after a while that you're really not competing against anyone except yourself. Because it, it, if you go in and you do the best job that you can, there's nothing else you can do. A lot of people will say it's luck. I don't believe it's luck. I believe it's when uh, preparedness meets opportunity. And sometimes you only get three or four opportunities. And if you're not prepared when they come up, they'll remember that. 